In today's online uh, house fellowship, we're going to examine the fact that Jesus is coming for his own, those whom he has purchased with his own blood. Hello, my name is Ambrose, and welcome to Ambrose King Online Ministries. And when we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 2, I'm going to look at verse 11. It says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Some people have been deceived that just because they join a particular denomination, that um, Jesus will come for them. Others think that because they pay tithes, because I remember a friend pastor of mine keeps saying that if you don't pay tithes, you will not go to heaven. Some think that is their works, but the best place to, to, to go is the Bible. So we're going to examine the scriptures to see what the Bible says. In our ministry, our goal is to win as men to Christ and help believers to be established in Christ so that they don't get deceived because the devil is there to deceive people and they come with smooth words and well-packaged false gospel. Gospels of uh, demons and seductive gospel to derail you. You see, you belong to Jesus because you are born of him, because you have his spirit. The question you ask yourself, do you belong to Jesus? Are you one of his? You are the one that answer. We are not here to condemn, but um, we have to look at the word and examine ourselves. Remember, it is appointed unto man to die once. After that is judgment. After death, you cannot go back and say, do you belong to Jesus or not? While you are alive, this is the best time for you to examine yourself. Remember that Jesus is coming and he's coming very soon and he's going to take his out of this earth while the rest will face the Antichrist in tribulation. So it's not because you go to a particular denomination or a particular church or you have a particular a pastor or geo or bishop or archbishop over you that makes you a believer. It's what the word of God says that is final. It's not because you fast a hundred days, dry fast, or you give dangerously or you are nice. It's what the word of God says that is final. So let's examine the scriptures. In John chapter 1 verse 12, the Bible says, But as many as receive him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. What a remarkable scripture. It says as many. It didn't say everybody. As many as received him. The Greek word is lambano. As many that receive him, to them he gave power. He now gave power when you receive Christ. When you get saved by believing on what he did, he gives you the power to become sons of God. My goodness. So that not everybody, but as, as many. So the option has been left open. It is your choice if you want to be among the many that receive Christ. Remember that God created everyone, but not everyone is a child of God. God created everybody on this earth, both white, blacks, um, Spanish, Japanese, Chinese, Africans, Americans, Asians. God created everybody. But not everybody are his children. You see, Adam lost the image of God. In, in the beginning, God created man and he put his image in man. But when Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, man lost the image. When you look at the third chapter of Genesis or so, you see that he started having children according to the image of Adam, which is the sinful nature. Jesus came back to restore this, that lost image that was uh, lost to the devil, that lost image that was lost in the garden of eden jesus came to restore that image back to man when you get saved the right way so adam lost the image in the garden of eden when they sin when the devil deceived them so they lost that image but jesus is the only one that can restore that image it tells us in that john chapter 1 verse 12 it said but as many as received him today he gave power the power to become so when you become the sons you become offsprings of god offspring you hear from god so you carry the same identity in romans chapter 8 we're going to take one step further and i'll read verse 9 it says but ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that the spirit of god dwells in you now watch the next statement it said now if any man have not the spirit of christ he is none of his so it is very important for you to have the spirit of christ you have to have the spirit of christ to become a child of god to become um a follower a true follower of christ i always tell people when they come to my ministry and to my church the fact that you come to my church doesn't make you a christian you have to believe on jesus you have to have the spirit of christ living in you to be a christian to be a true believer when the spirit of christ dwells in you it authenticates you as his it is the spirit of christ that comes to live in you he dwells in you he doesn't visit he stays in there permanently when you got saved it is when you have the spirit of christ that you become his he now authenticates you carolyn how are you thanks for joining you see it's not 
of any of your works it's not by you going to a particular church a particular denomination that makes you a child of god it's not even through water baptism it's not being nice it's not because you don't sin it's not because you have your, your good works are you feel that your good works outweigh your bad works that makes you a child of god the spirit of christ must dwell inside of you so the question i have for you before rapture rapture is around the corner are you sure that is that uh, the spirit of christ lives in you you are the one to answer you don't need to answer me let's take it one step further first corinthians chapter 6 i'm going to read verse 19. he said what you know know ye not your body is the temple of the holy ghost which is in you, you see it's confirming again that once you are saved the right way the holy spirit comes to live in you that become his headquarters which ye have of god and ye are not your own verse 20 for ye are bought with a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are god's you see god now lay possession of you once you get saved you are no longer your own the holy spirit comes to live in you become the headquarter of heaven because the holy spirit brings everything about god to your to your body it comes to live in you when you get saved. Verse 20 says you are bought with a price. The Holy Ghost who purchased you now lives in you. He purchased you through the precious blood of Jesus that was shed. You were bought at a price because Jesus shed his blood. The price that Jesus paid for, your, for you, for your soul, is the blood that he shed on the cross when you believe on him. When you look at Ephesians, I'm going to read verse 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 12 to 14. It said that we should be to the praise of his glory. Who first trusted in Christ, in whom also trusted, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after ye that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Verse 14 of Ephesians chapter 1 says, Which is the earnest of our inheritance, unto the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. My goodness, what a remarkable scripture. What a remarkable scripture. He said, When you trusted on jesus when you believe on jesus after you heard the word that means you heard the gospel you were not there when jesus was provided but because it was written for you you heard you read you heard it you trust you believe on that gospel that what jesus did on the cross was enough for your salvation so you trusted you believed by releasing your faith and saying to god then after that the holy spirit comes to live in you not only live in you come to seal you you are sealed when you believed and that seal never breaks until the day of redemption. That is when, you, when God comes to glorify you, give, you know, give you a glorified body. That seal remains in with you. Is that's what authenticates you? Glory to God. So Jesus is coming for those who have the seal of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is coming back for those who have His Spirit living in them and have the seal of the Holy Spirit. You have to ask your question every day: Do you have the Holy Spirit seal? Do you have the seal of the Holy Spirit? Do you have the Spirit of Christ? In John chapter 14, I'm going to read verse 1 to 4. It says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. That is Jesus talking. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Wow. <laughs> what a remarkable promise for those who belong to Jesus, not for everybody. It's just for those who belong to Jesus. The devil is not preparing a place for you. A false preacher, a false prophet, a false religion, they will not prepare a place for you. When you die, it's straight to hell. But this is a remarkable promise. Only Jesus had the audacity to say this to his followers. He said it. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Regardless of what is going on in the world, don't be troubled. Whether you, you are rich, you are prosperous, you have a private jet, you have a house or not. Whether your bank account is going red, it doesn't matter. He said, let not your heart be troubled. And now Paul gave you a promise. In my father's house are many mansions. If you are not so, I would have told you. So Jesus would have told us if there's no hope. Jesus is our hope. He now said, I go and prepare a place for you. Definite article. He prepared that place and it's for you. Because you believe in him. I now say, if I go... I, he said, I will come again and receive you. I say, verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And that is the rapture. That is the first instance of those who will go to Jesus. He's going to come in the clouds and he's going to uh, take his own out of this earth. That is rapture. He's going to rapture his own. He said, I go and prepare a place for you. So he has already prepared a place. He said, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, ye may also be. My goodness. What a beautiful promise from Jesus. 
So trust this verse and what it means. If you are a believer, no matter what you're going through, no matter the challenges, no matter the attacks, no matter what you're going through, trust this passage that Jesus is talking to you. It's not talking to everybody, but to those who are saved. Trust this verse. Jesus has already gone to prepare a place for us in heaven. A glorious place. Far, 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 far better than the most beautiful place on earth. Glory to God. He's coming back to take you to that glorious place in heaven. He promised it and he's fulfilling it. And he's about to land. He's about to come to collect you and take you. My goodness. So you'll be with him forever and he will be transparent to you. Anything that he's doing, he is going to be transparent. He's not going to be manipulating you. He's not going to be coining you or deceiving you. He's not going to be lying to you. Jesus said he will be transparent. So whatever he's doing, you will know. He's not going to keep you in darkness. He's not going to, you know, take from you and take advantage of you, abuse you, use you and dump you like uh, most people do on earth. Not like the rulers of the world. Not like false prophets or false ministers who turn you into zombies and abuse you and dump you and take from you. No, Jesus wants you to be with him forever. And whatever he's doing, you will know. And he wants you to know. So how will this Bible fellowship help you? The first thing you need to, uh, to do is uh, do for your, know for yourself. Do you live for Jesus or do you live for yourself or for the devil? You have to examine yourself. I, can't, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to uh, judge you. I mean, condemn you. You have to know. You see, you have to judge yourself while you are alive. Otherwise, when God judge you, it's going to be terrible. So God gave us the opportunity for us to judge ourselves and make amends. You see, when you got saved, you belong to Jesus, not to your wife, not to your husband, not to your children, not to your church, not to your pastor. You belong to Jesus. That is the fact. He's the one who died. He paid dearly for you with that precious blood that he shed on that cross. Otherwise, you are going to belong to your geo, your bishop, your prophet, and they cannot take you to heaven. You're going to be, belong to a pastor. That's why I always tell people, don't, don't, don't try to elevate me. Don't try to, uh, j- just call me Brother Ambrose or Pastor Ambrose. You belong to Jesus. I point them back to Jesus. So uh, that's why a lot of people, when they start worshiping men, they fall into big error. Your life is to always bring glory to God, to Jesus. You have to bring glory to God all the time. Will you make mistake? Absolutely, you will make mistake. When you make mistake, repent, admit and move forward your life must always always as a minister of the gospel your life must always bring glory to god not cursing people on the pulpit not you know uh fighting or trying to kill people who disagree with you with your doctrine you know it doesn't reflect christ your life must always bring glory to god and must bring glory to your members otherwise if your life doesn't bring glory to god it will affect all your members the anointing from you, the, the, the corrupted anointing will flow to your members and they'll be hailing you and, and, and they'll be flattering you while you are being destroyed and they'll be destroyed at the same time. Your life must bring glory to God at all times. Glory to God. That's what authenticates the fact that you belong to Jesus. Remember that Jesus is coming for his own. So don't be left behind. It's not about what you do. It's about are you saved through the precious blood. If you choose to live for yourself, if you choose to live for the devil, you will have yourself to be blamed. Yeah. You know, uh, one thing is, after rapture, if you choose to come to Jesus, yes, he will still take you. But you are going to have to pay dearly. You are going to have to work for your salvation. And the earth dwellers, the Antichrist, and, and the fallen angels that will be ruling this earth will come against you hard. It's not worth it. So if you choose to come to Jesus after rapture, it will be through pain, through hunger, and through death. As a matter of fact, after rapture, for you to come to Jesus, you will be murdered, you will be killed. For you to be raptured, up, uh, for you to be taken away. I mean, after the first, the next group, which is 144,000 elites, elects and, and, and the two witnesses. So if you choose to be stubborn enough to say no, you want to satisfy your own flesh, it's going to be painful for you to come to Jesus after rapture. So, if you're watching me right now, you're not yet saved or you're not even sure of your salvation. The first place to do this, you examine yourself, judge yourself. Let me read this verse, Colossians chapter 3, verse 3 to 4, as I round up. It says, For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. It says, When Christ appears, you will appear with him in glory. It's not for everybody, it's for those who are saved the Bible way. If you are not saved, you just be a church member, a follower of a man or a woman, you're just following people here and there, you are not saved. And you will not appear in the glory of God. Remember, 
Anyone that doesn't have the spirit of Christ is not his. So you will not appear with him in that glory. You will be, con you will be left behind and earth dwellers will deal with you. Uh, the Antichrist and Satan will rule. You know, nothing good comes from the devil. So I encourage you to get saved today. Come to God today. Get saved. If you are not saved, he said for our life, he said when Christ, who is our life, shall appear. Remember, when you are saved, Christ becomes your life. Your life is now hidden in Christ and in God. Christ becomes your life. He reflects from, from inside, outside. Glory to God. So when you get saved, your new life will now be hidden in Christ Jesus. He lives through you. When he comes back, you will be united with him in his glory. Marvelous. I'm looking forward to that day. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, it is the best you can get on earth. The best. There's no other glory that can be compared to the glory of God that will be revealed in you when it appears. You know, it's, it's amazing. When you look at that word glory, it says you appear with him in glory. The Greek word is doxa. My goodness. It means the kingly majesty. We belong to Christ as supreme ruler majesty in the sense of the absolute perfection of the deity that is what you are going to be metamorphosed to you are going to be translated the beauty of heaven is going to manifest in you when christ comes back only for those who have his spirit those who are saved how do you get saved yet yeah, the gospel the gospel is in first is in uh, first corinthians chapter 15 verse 1 to 4. first recognize that you are a sinner you need a, a, a savior know that you cannot help yourself your pastor your jew your prophet pastor ambrose cannot help you your husband your wife your children cannot help you your best friend cannot help you man at his man at his best is man slay man so they will disappoint you they will dump you and they will move on to the next person but jesus said i will never leave you nor forsake you so know that you need a savior repent by turning repentance means a change of mind you just change your mind very simple when people say repent, they think they want them to stop sinning. You see, man, a natural man cannot stop sinning. The natural man, sin is in their food. But when you repent, you change your mind. You say, okay, I'm going to turn to Jesus. You hear the gospel that he died for all of your sins, past, present, and future sin. And he, he was buried, he raised up himself from dead, and he's in heaven. As it is written in the gospel. You believe that gospel, that that is true. Now you now say it to God. You tell him, according to Romans chapter 10, verse 10, say that if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus and believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Once you say to him with a believing heart, not with fake lips, not because you are trying to please somebody, with a believing heart, then the Spirit of God comes into you. He starts building you up. He starts shaping you. Oh, the beauty of his when Christ shall appear. You will appear with him. You will be united with him in his glory. There's no human being on this side. Your governor, your president, the president of America cannot even give you that glory. Nobody can give you that glory, but Jesus will give you that glory. Only when you get saved. So come to God today the right way. Come to Jesus. Get saved. And look up to him because he's coming back. Look up to that day when you shall be united with him in glory. I trust that this short fellowship has been a blessing to you. Just want to uh, put your comments. Like it and share. Let others know that Christ is coming. And he's only coming for his own. Any other person left is for the devil to deal with. And you don't want your family members to be harassed and tormented. It's up to you. We can't force you to get saved. But I invite you, get saved today. So that when Christ appears, you will be united with him in that beautiful glory. Remember that I always love you. I have no choice but to love you. Because Christ lives in me. And I have the Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit all over me. So I have to love you. I have no choice. Remember that Jesus loves you most. Because he's the one who died on that cross. And he's the one that will bring that glory. That you will unite with him that glory when you come. He loves you most. I will see you again in my next video. Remain blessed. Bye-bye.